and we are here hello everybody hi <laughs> how are you hope everybody's doing fine hope you had uh, some great holidays the ones that you uh, that uh, have been celebrating this weekend sophie's had a nice easter i know yeah. that for sure <laughs> yes i have thanks to you <laughs> no and actually i think thanks to getting out of the quarantine <laughs> yeah also that also that but uh, like uh, being showed around in bucharest and going for a cocktail that was very nice yeah that was really nice yes and uh she i think sophie's also going to get to celebrate easter twice because our Easter, uh, we celebrate in Romania, we celebrate the Orthodox Easter, which is in the end of April. It's actually mm -hmm. May 1st, I think. Yeah. I think we'll stay just about till the beginning of uh, May. So that's going so to be. So you also get early. to celebrate with yeah. Easter twice. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay. Um, I think everybody, everything's working fine. If there are any problems, please just let us know. I'm, I'm <laughs> going to try to fix everything as uh, as far as i can and today we are going a little back in time because we had uh, arrived at ivanchuk but suddenly i realized that we have passed geller without looking at him and that would have been a shame yeah. <laughs> because he, he has some beautiful games and he's um he's an attacking player that's worth uh, studying so i have a few nice games for you today the first one that i wanted to start with is this game against Portish, where uh, Geller is white. Uh, I think, in fact, the games that I decided on are all white. <laughs> Geller is white in all of them. But it's just a coincidence. <laughs> I just like them most here. But and it is easier to attack with the white pieces. Could be that it's easier to yeah. attack with white. But he has beautiful games with black as well. I just, you know, <laughs> you get attached to some of them. <laughs> and then... Um, I chose these ones, it just happens. So this one against Portish, I really like the way he started here. I think Black has just played the move um, Queen to d7, I think. Not 100% sure. Or Knight f6 was the last move. I think Queen d7. Offering the trade of Queens anyway. So here White has to make a choice um, on how to continue. What do we play here? He finds a very nice continuation. I'm going to give you guys some time. I I check mm. everything out here. So if we take the queen, black will take back, and then everything gets a little bit uh, boring. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Um. If we don't want the queen's raid, then we would have to play queen c2. That could be like an option of going, let me see, like queen c2, and then maybe uh, getting this bishop out to e3 and putting the rook in the d file. Uh, but it's it seems like more of a long-term strategic plan. And usually <laughs> you, you make me do tactics <laughs> for the first few ones. <laughs> So I think I'm going to see that that is, if there's nothing else, then that could be a plan. Yeah, keep um, looking for options here because, of course, okay, you can get the queen out, you can take on d7. Yeah. And keep looking. Okay. <laughs> there's a nice square maybe here in f5, but it doesn't really, I mean, I'm thinking like putting a knight on f5 and something on h6, but h6 is pretty well protected because the bishop on f8 is also guarding it. Um... Mm, well, maybe. Uh, now I'm looking at a uh, knight h5, which he can't take because then we take the queen and he can't take back. And if he takes the queen, then we take an f6 first with a check and then we ruin like the pawn structure around the king. Mm -hmm. So we do get like the trade something. of things, but we get something for it at least. Yeah. Um, but what if he just, maybe he can play something like queen e7. Um, queen e7, then, then what? 
And maybe the knight is a little bit misplaced. I mean, we could take the knight on f6, but then he would take back with the queen and no longer ruin uh, the pawn structure. I'm going to yep. look for suggestions in the chat now. <laughs> let's see. I think you have um, some good ideas over there. Let's see. Hi, Aswath. Nice to see you in the chat. Okay, Thank so you for helping us here. <laughs> no, no hmm. I think... Uh, it's a difficult one, maybe. It's it's a difficult one. It's not difficult. Knight h5 is the first move. You're right about that. Okay, then I'm gonna keep looking because I think the only critical thing I can see is queen e7. Yeah. It's basically, you know, with knight h5, you want to get something. If you move the queen away or take on d7, it's going to be simply an, a very equal position. Yeah. Knight h5 is the only way to try and play for a small advantage, even if it's not a lot. Maybe then we could, <laughs> this is very, very uh, counterintuitive, <laughs> but then we could put the other, what do you say about knights on the rim? <laughs> then we could put the other knight on h4, um, because then the queen would be protecting the knight on h5, and we could maybe try to jump on f5 with the f3 knight. Yes. Yeah, that's is, that the, is that the solution? Yes. Oh, we also have another suggestion, but let's just, I really, sorry, <laughs> the, the weird I way of putting the knights and, and the rim of the board. Bishop g5, uh, knight h5 and knight g5. Okay, let's, knight h5 is anyway, we have all agreed on knight h5, so let's go for yeah, knight so. h5. Now, the idea is, as you pointed out, so if queen d1, we want to give this in between check. Double the pawns, rook takes d1. Yeah. It's not a lot, but it's a small advantage. From nothing, we have to start someplace. Yes. <laughs> At least now there are two uh, weak pawns here, the pawn on h6 and the one on f6. The square on f5 is also weak. White could use, and maybe he could keep uh, pressing. But in the game, black, of course, went for queen e7, which you are looking at. And here we had knight g5 as a suggestion and bishop g5 uh-huh does that uh, work knight g5 okay i have to wonder what happens if i take on g5 first i kind of there's something about bishop g5 that's interesting because then black can't take the knight and if he takes the bishop then we take with the knight and threaten on f7 but then maybe he can defend with something like knight d8. Knight d8 is one defense that he has, yeah. yes. And um, so you want bishop g5. I think knight d8 looks pretty convincing on bishop g5. After, okay, let me show you it on the board. <laughs> bishop g5, wait. Here. Okay, so here I have to take, knight takes going to refresh for you and here the way to defend is knight d8 looks awkward <laughs> looks like the knight's uh, really passive but hey it's a piece up yes so if i can get away with this i'm going to be okay and now black is threatening to take on no not oh but it's still a threat because just exchanging pieces would be good for black here yes but if you take on h5 queen h5 uh, there's a problem on h7, so I'm not sure that's a threat. Yeah. And I see on um, Twitch, Dangerous Riot is saying knight h4, does it do anything? I think the knight h4... Knight h4 is, is what you uh, wanted to threatening play. To go to, it's, it's threatening to go to f5 at least. I think it's uh, at least applying some pressure. Yes, yeah. And we're not sacrificing a piece in that position, so not that's... Yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah, knight h4 is what he played. And it's worth uh, seeing that there are more than one, there's more than one threat, knight f5, but knight g6 might also be there because of the pin. Oh, yeah. I don't know if it's doing anything, but it's there. It's uh, <laughs> worth looking at. <laughs> no, black needs to, to do something. And the queen is not very safe either. No, She doesn't have many squares. She needs to protect f6. So if I can get to play knight f5, where is the queen going? It's not so easy. No. He has to take on h5, queen h5. And this position is actually 
very very dangerous for black he has only one uh, move to keep the game going and that is knight d8 he has to defend f7 mm. and you're going to see why in the game because in the game he went for knight a5 going after the bishop on b3 and here comes the next question what do we do with white Uh, I think we either we play knight f5 or we take an h6. Okay, uh, keep looking for uh, or <laughs> or, for, uh, for other candidate moves. <laughs> what is there? Hi, Greg. Uh, Sophie is sorry, Sophie. Eighteen hundred fifty seventy. What was your rating? Oh, I actually dropped. I think I because I I had a, a, a an unfortunate tournament in the beginning of January, so I got just below eighteen hundred. But I'm oh. higher on online. <laughs> <laughs> um, and oh, she's training online. hard. She's training hard, as yeah. you can see. Um, what else is there? Okay, so we could take an f seven, but then he takes with the queen and threatens uh, uh, an exchange of queens. I don't like that. Knight g6, as you mentioned before. Knight g6 is there. Bishop h6 is there. It is also mentioned in the chat. Here, really here. you said knight f5 like, also, I think, right? Yeah, I prefer, I've, I've, knight f5 is uh, what I think looks the most natural. Hmm. But are you really threatening much with knight f5, queen f6 probably, right? I have to go to f6 to keep everything defended. Yeah, it's maybe just... Knight f5 looks good if... Like it looks good, but not necessarily winning. Uh... No, you have better. <laughs> That's what I mean. What is... Uh... Bishop h6 has been suggested. Bishop, yeah, harsh. Bishop takes h6. Okay. Oh, wait. Isuru says bishop g5. Yeah, game. I just saw that now. Oh. Bishop g5. <laughs> Finally, you wanted to play bishop g5 ah, for a while, okay. Isuru, and now bishop g5 is really game over. <laughs> that's a beautiful move. Oh, hi, thank you. I'm still waiting for the t shirt. <laughs> what are you saying about t shirt? Yes, uh, Isuru just sent me um, an awesome t shirt. Uh, a chess t-shirt that I'm going oh, to receive so soon. <laughs> I can't wait to see it. I think it's uh, it's getting closer. It should be here this week. <laughs> I need some more clothes with like chess motives. Uh, I, think. <laughs> I think that would, will be my first one. I have all the club uh, equipment that I had. Uh, I had a t-shirt and I had a, a training um, sports thingy uh t-shirt and uh, yeah. and pants but it's not like a fun chess thing no i was once in a chess club in palermo and uh, when i got there there were these girls and they had some uh earrings with like little oh. lights <laughs> on it it was very very nice um okay bishop but g5 back to our tactic <laughs> bishop g5 if, if if pawn six then knight g6 is working because of h8 Yes, this was very pretty, knight g6. That's yeah. why I couldn't leave this game aside because I love the tactic with bishop g5 and knight g6. I think this is uh, the the most beautiful part of this. Yeah. And the queen, I mean, queen takes g5 is also losing because then queen takes f7. Yeah. So the queen has to stay and defend f7 for most of the time. She's overworked. Overworked, yeah. She went to d7 in the game. And then now rook d1. If queen moves away, then queen takes f7 once again. Bishop d6 was played. And now the bishop leaves the defense of the king. So now we can take on h6. Yeah. It's even better now. Pawn takes h6. And he went for queen g6 check. King f8. And here I like the move that he played. I think there are many ways to win already in this position. Just, you know, don't give up the queen, probably. <laughs> it's the safest mm -hmm. advice. But he goes for queen f6, which I like very much because it keeps the king stuck. You no, know, you, you take away the, the escape squares. Yeah. 
And black can't put anything on e7 because no. then it will checkmate. Yeah. Oh, also queen h8, that's what you yeah, mean. Yeah. Yes. Knight g6 is a threat and queen h8 in case of queen e7, let's say. Yeah, he played king g8 in the game and now he goes for rook e3. A rook lift is a the rook lift. thing we need in this game. Final. No, that's, you have everything. You have bringing the knight, you have a little tactic in the beginning just to get things going, activate the pieces. A bishop sacrifice and now the rook lift and you have it all. <laughs> There's nothing more. And here Portish resigned. Uh, game ended really in 23 beautiful, uh, beautiful game, beginning with the knights on the rim and then just... Everybody getting yeah. going for checkmate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I liked it uh, very much. There was another line here that I wanted to show you. On bishop h6, there's also knight takes b3 to remove this bishop. But here we can take on g7. And then knight f5. Yeah, we're threatening checkmate, so they have to take. Yeah. And here you have knight f5. Yeah, knight f5 seems to be working immediately. Yeah, the, the move that I added here in the commentary is queen g5 followed by knight f5. But, it's but maybe same. that's better because maybe if we play knight f5 first, can he try to escape then on, on f6? f6? I mean, it doesn't look very nice, but... I don't think uh, he's going anywhere. No. Uh, no, we can I think there's a checkmate H4. on h6. There's mm -hmm. a checkmate on h6. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty convincing. Oh, yeah, yeah, the knight is covering the... Yeah. The knight is doing a great job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Finally made it to f5. So I think queen takes f5 is the only move here, which is what's, what's happening in my line with queen g5 also, because after knight f5, uh, you get to win the queen. He has to move the rook. And here you win the queen, like that. <laughs> Yours Wait. is uh, probably more direct. Yeah, knight f5. Okay, let's move on, because I have two other beautiful games. I'm going to start with this game against another Ephim, <laughs> Kogan Ephim. And here Geller is white. And this game was played just when he was a first category player, when Ger Geller wasn't a grandmaster yet. And he analyzes this game in his book, in the Nemesis. And he, um, he mentions that he was inspired by the Romantic um, era a lot. So he, was, he, he, he looked for sacrifices, he looked for attacks. Uh, there are some games where he goes for queen sacrifices just because he had this influence and he wanted them to he wanted to apply everything in his games. But he also says that in this time <laughs> of his play, he didn't understand the logic of the strategic laws. So, for example, in this game, he plays rook d3, trying yeah. to <laughs> to go for a rook lift, bring the rook in front of the of the pawns, but. Um, he said he mentions that here in this position, black has no weaknesses, so white's attack should not succeed in theory. Well, I would have gone for the rook lift <laughs> as well, but I'm probably a little bit like that as well. You're also influenced by the romantic chess. <laughs> yeah, I think I also I look more for like very like uh, aggressive lines and, and not having um, not being quite as patient as you sometimes have to be when playing chess. <laughs> Yeah, I think, uh, well, looking for aggressive idea is fine, but some, I think what he means is don't overdo it, no? Because yeah. here... <laughs> is rook d3 a bad move? Um, almost. <laughs> but black didn't punish it. Okay. Yeah, because, okay, he played a a5 in this game. And then rook g3, right? No, oh, actually okay. he goes to f3. And here black goes for b4, which kind of um, let's the game become a little uh, complicated. Mm -hmm. White gets some chances. But here I think what uh, Black would have done is actually d5 and strike in the center. No? That's what we know now. Yeah. d5 and in case of e5 the knight's going to e4. The queen is kind of misplaced on d4 after all the trades. The white queen. No? Yeah. Uh, here, I mean. 
85, 94, and if 94, let me refresh. If 94 is what I'm, what I mean is that D takes E4, the queen is hanging, and this rook on F3 yeah. is also hanging. So here black is, well, is doing fine. This is a nice position. The rook is not doing much on F3. Probably white has to play bishop E7. <coughs> but he goes for b4, which makes the game interesting. What do you think Geller plays here? <laughs> Just to <laughs> go for a little game, uh, guess. <clears throat> 95 is a thematic idea in the initial position for white. I'm not sure 95 for white works. 95 is usually works in the Sicilian where uh, the C file is open and you have a rook and then you open the C file and things are happening. I'm not sure if it works in this position though. The king is also castled. We should of course consider moving the knight, but I think <laughs> he might have gone for something more aggressive. So I'm thinking if, if it makes sense to take an f6 and then after bishop takes, sacrificing the uh, exchange. Mm -hmm. but then going here with the knight on g4. Maybe we should save the knight on c3 first, but I think knight on g4, then both f6 and h6 are good squares for the knight. Um, but it's a lot of, it, we sacrifice a whole rook in that line, right? Yes, but the line that you are pointing out is really interesting, actually. Okay. So bishop f6 is what you want to play, right? Yes. And here yeah. rook f6, yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is actually interesting. He could have gone for this and pawn takes f6. Here you don't have to give up uh, the other knight as well. You can just play knight e2. Save it first, yeah. Yeah, retreat and then go for an IG4. Yeah. But yes, here it start, it's starting to look interesting for white. Yeah, and the queen works so nice with the knights, with the knights, so... It's probably not enough though, but I think black has to find some precise moves. Like here, for example, queen e7. There's also e5, but I'm not sure that I'm more inclined to play queen e7 than e5. I don't really want to give up these squares. I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure if it's if it's that bad, but I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't give the knights any squares. Queen e7. No. <laughs> and on knight g3, there is this defense, king h8. And then the rook is... Uh... Yeah, and on knight g4, the idea is that you have e5 in some lines. If I mean, you can give up the pawn, that's what I mean. Because white can't take with the, with the knight because of e5 in that position. Ah, so maybe rook g8 first, and then if white takes an f6, then going e5? Yeah. Okay. Because if you try to defend the pawn, it's, it's not going to be possible. King g7, there's this check on, on h5. And again, I don't really want to play e5 in this position and allow this knight to get on f5. <laughs> no. That, that looks dangerous. So it's not easy to defend with black, that's what I mean. It's probably possible, but it's very difficult to find everything. All the right moves. And here if b takes c3, well here we haven't even... almost haven't sacrificed material, we can just come back with the rook. And rook g3, play this position. g6, queen b2. I think this is equal, right? Yeah, this is yeah. equal. I can go to g4. It shouldn't be a lot, but well. <laughs> Maybe if we can get the knight in. Yeah, I think I slightly prefer white here. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I figure that. But I think here... Uh, queen b7 will kind of trade queens for black. Can't we just, we can move the queen then back to d4? I was uh, trying to go for queen b4. Yeah. 
queen b7 here and on queen d4 I just wanted to go here ah, now we have to I guess now you have to I guess no because the rook's hanging <laughs> no you don't have to you have queen e3 but yeah you don't have to you can play queen e3 and and keep keep queens on the board mm. So bishop takes f6 is, uh, is an interesting idea here, but <laughs> the romantic <Not> chess. <laughs> and now you see the romantic chess, he goes for rook f6. So ah. Sacrifice everything. <laughs> I was so disappointed first. I was like, ah, oh, is he moving the knight? No, no he's no. not. <laughs> no, no. That was not even an option, I think. No. But rook f6 doesn't work so well. There are some ideas, of course. It looks dangerous for black. His idea was that if pawn takes f6, he wanted to go knight g4. Yeah. If... And then it's checkmate if he takes the bishop, right? Yes, there is knight h6, check, and queen h8, checkmate. And then that's game over. But here black can defend. It looks scary, but it's okay. <laughs> he can go e5. Queen c4. Now he can take over here. The point of queen c4 was to follow up with knight h6. And then take here on f7. But you have to you have to keep going. And how much we're down a rook full rook, rook yeah. yeah. So it doesn't even if we take an f7. King g7 is the yeah. idea. Yeah. And there's nothing happening. There are some checks. It looks scary, but it's okay. <laughs> it's not checkmate. And on rookie three? Yeah. How do we survive this? Let me I, flip the board for you. You know, like, do you. <laughs> Sorry? Maybe d5? d5, yes. Yeah. Yeah, d5. I'm going to go back. <laughs> Finally, no? It's, it's, now it's fine. Take yeah. on f7. Black is winning. But uh, I can also understand Black's <laughs> fear of taking on f6 in this position. Yes. He took on c3 in the game, which is also okay for Black. He went to knight g4 in this position. And here Black goes h5. And h5 seems to be uh, already a mistake. There were some uh, better continuations, like pawn takes b2. And again, it seems there's nothing. Knight h6, for example, just take everything. <laughs> Bishop h6. There's a threat of checkmate on g7 now. Uh, yeah. The rook moves and queen g7, but e5. That's the thing that black has in this position, right? Those like central pawns that can just push in and cut off the queen in many of these lines. Yeah, but it has to be very well calculated also. Yeah. Because white still has resources, it's not over. Rook f3. <laughs> ah. And he wants rook g3 and bishop yeah. g7. But that's only. Uh, that's just going to be a draw, right? Probably only a perpetual, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you have king h8, and it's not even that. No. Don't take the queen, but just defend. Rook g8 here, it's a piece up. The pawn on b2 is also uh, very frightening. White has to waste some time and take that pawn. And this is where the attack ends. There is nothing more for white. But let's see how the game went. He yeah. went h5. And what do we do now? How would you continue? Um... What do we do with white? Mm -hmm. 
everything's hanging. So candidate moves. So candidate moves could say be taking an uh, f7, knight h6, bishop h6, mm -hmm. uh, maybe even. Okay, I don't like rook e3, but I'm just gonna <laughs> list it anyway. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's all I can see right <laughs> now. Oh yeah, yeah, I think that's you know. That's all I can see right now. You got the captures, you I got the checks, like... and the threats now. <laughs> I don't like rook e3, so I'm gonna move that. So I only have three moves to calculate right now. That's taking on f7 or putting a piece on h6. Yeah. There's something uh, very satisfying about going <laughs> bishop eight six because then we have three pieces hanging. I think that <laughs> kind of, uh, looks pretty. But question if is is if uh, like maybe it takes the knight first. Uh, maybe no. Then maybe we could actually take on f seven. Because if he takes them, then queen takes. Now he's escaping though on the white light squares. Okay, let's go for. What if we take here with the book? He has to take with the king. Then bishop is hanging, knight is hanging. <laughs> I think we have a lot of hanging pieces. Okay, yeah, let's go do. with the knight. I'm just looking very briefly at everything here first. Knight h6, h6, that's a check. Mm -hmm. uh, he has to take it because if he doesn't, then we're going to take with one of the pieces on f7. So he has to play pawn takes h6. Yeah. And then maybe now we could. Oh, but it's the same problem, right? Because if we take the bishop, then he can't take an f6 because queen takes, and then there's going to be checkmate on, on g7. But then maybe he can play e5 again uh -huh. yes he probably can play e5 but okay slow down after after pawn takes h6 you're looking only at bishop h6 yeah i'm starting to look at we could take with the oh we take with the rook <laughs> you can also take, take with the rook save some pieces <laughs> but then if after rook takes uh h6 what if he plays e5 yeah what if he plays e5 but then I'm going to look to see if people have any <laughs> good moves here. Uh, bishop h6, knight, yeah, knight h6, uh, but then what? But then e5, yes, dangerous, right? That's what I'm concerned about. Knight h6 is the best move in this position. And knight h6, book takes. E5. e5 just maybe we can just move the queen like yeah <laughs> that uh, just queen e3 or queen e3 or... defend the bishop and yeah. it seems like you have a, a, a lot of attack still going okay this would have been the best pawn takes rook, so at least the most correct e5 queen e3 and it looks scary i would say <laughs> for black yeah. it's not it's not easy to play this. Not easy at all. No, the kind of uh, the king is a bit airy. Uh, just a little bit, no? <laughs> yeah. Just a little bit. Yeah, knight h6 would have been the best move here. And you found the whole line, but it did not happen in the game. Uh, Bishop h6 that you liked so much because now we have three pieces hanging is what he played. <laughs> oh, okay. He's my spirit animal, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I so, think he was I think he had the same like, oh that would be cool. And then... <laughs> this would be very romantic like. Yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> okay, uh, besides uh, joke apart, this is really dangerous. I mean, black really has to be careful and find uh, the right continuations. It's not so obvious how how to defend in this position. <clears throat> He played e5, for example, in the game. Looks logical. Mm. Could have taken on g4. Let's see what happens on pawn takes g4. 
what is the point of bishop h6? Is it, uh, I think it's, no, this is what I was looking at. And rook takes f7, king takes f7, queen takes g7, king e8, and then he's escaping, right? That's right, yeah. So could we play rook g6 instead? We could, yeah. Nice. Rook g6 is really nice. There are some very nice tactical ideas uh, in these lines. And most of these uh, lines uh, are given by Geller, so he did see all this. <laughs> it's also and way before the computers. It's so. way, way before the computers, yeah. <laughs> they weren't even dreaming about computers. No. It's, this uh, was played in, in 1946. Uh. So, uh, if e5, then we take on g7. Hmm. King h8, they just running away for, uh, on f8 would, would run into some uh, discovered checks. So I don't think it's worth looking into it. King h8 and now queen c4 with a complicated position. White has very good chances, but we don't see the win yet. It's just a lot of counterplay. Yeah. And there is another line here. He could have gone king f8. And then queen takes g7 and run, run all the way to d7. This seems to be... One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> now at least got a few pawns for the piece, right? We do, and we're going to get g4, I guess. I'm going to get e6, but still it's not my queen d7, and that's where the checks stop. Yeah. But, okay, black is left with only two pawns will be left in the end. Mm. The G and C pawn will disappear, so no, it's, it's it's very complicated. Okay, so this happened. <laughs> this could have happened if pawn takes G four, but in the game, let's go with E five because it's getting interesting. Queen E three, and now he has to take on G four. It's already here. Black is walking on thin ice. For example, I just remembered it was it uh, Mihal Tal who said that you can only take one piece at a time. I don't remember that. I don't. I don't he know this quote. quote saying uh, because he he was like you know a crazy sacrifice. <laughs> this and I think he was asked about that and he said, well, my opponent can only take one piece at a time, and that, <laughs> that really applies to this game, right? It does. Yeah, three pieces mm -hmm. hanging, but you, he hasn't yet gotten any. No. Um, there's a very interesting point to g takes f6, to why this doesn't work. I'm going to give you some minutes to find this. It's very instructive. What do we play with white? <clears throat> okay, here's a full quote for, from Desperate Times. My pieces are hanging, but he can only take one at a time. <laughs> Where? Yeah, and was that, that was Mihal Tal, right? I think so. Okay, uh, I think I have an idea here. Yeah. But I, uh, I kind of want to go queen g3. Queen g3, okay. Um, because right now the king can't one. <laughs> so my idea is queen g3, and then if he takes the knight, then I take, and this is that's going to be checkmate, right? But he can run to h8. I mean, not going to the safe side with king f8, but at least getting out of the checks. So, so queen g3 and then king h8? I guess it looks like the only move. Ah, yeah, okay. And then if we take on... But then maybe we can take on e5. Mm -hmm. Is that working? <laughs> Book g8, yeah? g8, max f7, king h7 mm -hmm. maybe maybe queen f3 queen f3 Trying you to want to take on h5 that does look scary i have to say but maybe but then that there should be a defense there yeah like just covering f5 maybe 
Okay, I'm gonna see. But and you I can take on. Come. Sorry, you can take maybe on h5 on in that after queen f3. What you were looking there. Sorry. Uh, in that line that you are looking at. Okay, let's play it out. You're looking at yeah. queen g3. Let's show it. Yeah, I see it also being suggested by king h8. At least one other <laughs> in the chat. Okay, now I'm thinking since you took on e5, maybe I wanted to go king h7 so that your bishop's hanging. But okay, yeah, let's go. <laughs> Here, no, maybe I want to go king h7. So I, mean, king... I can't take an f6 because then the bishop is covering g7. Hmm here no and i want to take the bishop if you take on f6 yeah okay so i don't think queen g3 is working then <laughs> okay queen h4 still looks interesting but has to have to see if it's mate queen h4 i take on g4 and i don't see the mate no bishop f8 king g8 no, I don't think it's mate on queen h4. I just take the knight. Bravely take the knight. <laughs> and I'm going to hide on g8. I have faith in my... my little soldiers. Yeah. Okay, there was an interesting line here that I saw at some point. Knight f6, bishop f6 and queen f... queen g3. Okay. No, but... Then... But that's not checkmate because if you take on f6, bishop f6, queen g3, then the bishop is defending g7. Yeah. Yeah, that's the problem. And here the bishop is the bishop's on f6 defending. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, let's see what else we have. Hi, Juan David. <laughs> um, queen g3. You... Okay, this is the line that you looked at. Is that? Um, bishop g7 here okay mm, and what if i just take queen h6 but what if he doesn't take it then we still go queen h6 no but what if i take it wait <laughs> i just want to take <laughs> it how do you checkmate me queen h6 king g8 uh, maybe it's not it's not checkmate but i want to see how I this ends back to g8 and then there's rook e3 maybe yes maybe taking on h5 so the Knight can go, but it's, it's probably not checkmate. And we're down so much material that there should be checkmate now. If it's not, it's losing. <laughs> yes. No, actually, there's only one move to go for the checkmate here. And that is queen f3. <laughs> queen f3. It's not a check. It's mm -hmm. not uh, even threatening a check. Well, it is knight f6. But the funny thing is that black uh, doesn't have a defense here against knight f6 against knight f6 what if he goes for uh king h7 sorry let's see it king h7 and i could it... give a yeah sorry i could give a check on f5 and then i'm still getting ah yeah i'm keeping my bishop it's immediate move king h8 knight f6 And yeah. it's game over. Queen f3 is really... It's it's subtle. It's subtle, yeah. <laughs> subtle but efficient. Check the line. Bishop uh, defend. Is it the line with knight f6 here, I think? What line uh, are you talking? Check the line that bishop can defend, but queen g7 is made. Knight f6, bishop takes. Queen g3, yes. No, but I don't play bishop g7. I play king f h7 in this position. I just run. And the bishop defends the checkmate. And now we're down so, a lot. Now we're down a lot of material, yeah. So that's not... That's not going to work. <clears throat> okay. So, funny line, this one with g takes f6 did not happen. Black took on g4. And then he takes on g7. King takes. Here comes another check. King g8. And now he simply goes rook f5. 
<laughs> I'm saying simply rook f5 because it's a quiet move, but he's threatening rook h5. Yes. So I've said, oh, he actually plays bishop e8. I think f6 was the best move in this position for black. And this was the defense, but he goes for bishop e8. And this becomes a lot of fun now. Rook h5, f6, and just rook h4. <laughs> Try then to take take on g4 and uh, well try to checkmate no check another check on g7 then probably or check on g6 yeah yeah and g6 probably so you can go to f5 yeah yeah I like that not let uh, not allow the king to escape and here black goes queen c8. Queen c8 is a mistake and the follow-up is really pretty. Okay, he should have taken on b2 just to show you the, the right defense. And now queen h7, king f8. And in this position, white has nothing better than a perpetual. Just check and check. And again, mm -hmm. check. Because uh, this line, rook takes g4, which is what uh, probably what both players had seen, does not work. This is also quite instructive. How do you defend with black? Maybe bishop f7 and then uh, if there's a check on g7 we won with the king? Yeah, but there's a check on h8 that I think is... Ah, yes. That's very <laughs> annoying. It's a serious one. Um, I don't know because in this line we took on b2 so is that is that important somehow uh yes yes well it's we have that pawn ready to to promote and there is um yeah it seems that white is not really in time to to bring the other rook but here it's I have to go into defense mode look for a, every move and bishop g6 is the one that yeah will help you survive make some space for the king and not get mated it's it looks like it's the only move but the queen takes um how do we defend now queen c4 <laughs> ah. yeah protecting g8 with queen c4 <laughs> that's what you want to do yes and now black is fine again <laughs> Oh, you have to play so precise. Yeah, it's very difficult to do that in a real game. But queen c8, and now it's it's nice. Queen h8, king f7, check, go over here, and now queen g7. He's threatening checkmate on e7. Black doesn't really have many ways to defend, because there's another checkmate on g4. In case he defends the bishop. Yeah, so these are the two threats. He needs to run. King d7. And here comes the really, really nice move. Rook e3. And that's why we should have taken on b2. <laughs> Earlier, yeah. <laughs> I saw somebody in the chat saying, uh, let's see if I can find. Desperate times that, that c takes b2 is such a computer move. Like, yeah. <laughs> But, but now it makes sense. <laughs> like, yeah, okay, it makes sense. But when you are looking for for it, it's, I, I don't know it, if but... if you can find all these things. And besides, no. it, there was so much to calculate even earlier earlier in the game. It's yeah. all so complicated. Now he takes on b two, but it's a little too late. Yes, king c six, and take the queen. And it doesn't really matter that black gets another queen. <laughs> because there's only one check and queen b7 is a threat yes one of them he played here and queen e8 and now the material is equal but not not for long 
<laughs> Queen c6 and checkmate on a8 yeah. is coming. Black resigned here. No. Okay, and the final game is a famous game, is the win uh, against Smuslov. In, I think, match five it was of their... In game five of their match in the candidates in 65. And let's start from this position where things start moving. So how do we continue here with white? F5. F5. <laughs> Don't even think about it. F5. You should think about it if it's... A, but F5 seems very natural. Seems very natural. Just open the game. And and go ahead, no? So what is the idea? What if they take on f5? What do you have planned here, Sophie? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not planning anything. I'm just <laughs> pushing my pawns. Pushing forward. Um, no, I was thinking about... I think we can take an f5. Uh, but maybe also we could put a piece on f4, like maybe bishop f4, threatening the queen. Or we could go e. I really, I only saw f5. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you have okay, to start somewhere. What somewhere. do we have? Candidate moves we could take. We could push. We could put one of our pieces on f4. Uh huh. And threats. Um, Look for all the threats. Don't miss any of them. We could. Um, we could go bishop g5. Yeah, those are all the, all the threats, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five candidate moves. Okay, and knight g3 that I see now in the chat also looks interesting. It, it does have a point. It does but have a point, because f7 is hanging. Seven, seven. <laughs> <But> <laughs> it could be interesting. Anyway. Um, queen b3 is not a real threat, because f7 is well protected, and then I think knight a5 would be coming. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like knight a5, yes. Yes, okay. So let's see. Um, so if we should look at this by what's the most forcing, then taking an f5 is like the most forcing move, right? Taking a piece. Yeah. Uh, taking with the g pawn doesn't seem to be very good, opening up. So he would probably take with the bishop. And then that's where we should consider sacrifice and exchange this okay. is what i was <laughs> like thinking could be interesting uh mm -hmm. something like this and then maybe but the queen is not quite ready to join so we would have to first move our knight and then maybe get the queen to h5 yeah it, it doesn't look or maybe the knight would go to e 3 instead it doesn't look bad but it's it's like the, I think that's a promising line. I'm just gonna see if any of the others are. <laughs> I like also the line though with the knight g3, bishop yes. b6. Yeah, I think knight g3 after pawn takes f5, uh, right? After pawn, pawn takes f5. pawn takes f5, bishop takes knight g3. It looks interesting. Ah, yeah, that's also like a, a more. <laughs> <laughs> just keep the rook and keep her to attack on f7. That could also be interesting. Yeah get some yeah definitely but opening up this uh, f file seems good because f7 is a bit weak yeah if f7 mm -hmm. looked like a target okay what else was there we could put so, i don't actually like knight f4 the more i look at it because i think that it's kind of blocking both the bishop and the rook yeah um maybe bishop f4 could be an okay move but it also seems a little bit uh, because d4 is then very weak after that. So of course, mm -hmm. black would have to move the queen somewhere, but then like moving the queen and then we have to figure out what to do about d4. Yeah, you're also cutting the rook if you are yeah. hoping for that. Um, okay, you still have bishop g5. That was your last... <laughs> Threat. Oh, that the one. <laughs> G5. Okay, you, you didn't like that one, so you're not looking at it. <laughs> you can go f6. Uh, so he has to move the rook. Let's say he go here. Yeah. I don't know. 
Do we then... Can we take now, maybe? Mm-hmm. On yeah. F5? Yeah. Uh, here, here. Yeah. Is it, is it too... Should I not sacrifice? No. <laughs> okay. I think it's the only... It is the only... <laughs> okay. <laughs> And now, uh, I, I do wanna, knight g3 is also an knight option. Knight g3, yes. Knight g3 and rook f5 were the two options. Okay. I understand why you're looking at both of them. Uh, I can't see queen e1 was something I didn't look at, but it actually doesn't seem like a bad move. I just think it's a little bit slower. Yeah, it does look like it takes a while to get there. Yeah. Okay, but there is a point behind bishop g5 that in some lines you wanted to play d5, but you are pinned. So there are things happening on the d file and the rook is annoying on d8. For example, in the in this line, wait, in the line that you we were looking at before with pawn takes f5, bishop f5, knight g3. Here black can go, well, should go bishop e6 to keep everything defended. And now in this position, we don't really have d5 to uh, win. Doesn't threaten. Because we are pinned. Yeah. So that's the point of bishop g5. We want the rook to move away from d8. Because now in the same line, for example, I've played rook f8 in my line just to keep f7 defended. But if rook e8, I think here it's even clearer why this works. Bishop f5. I don't know if there's anything better than knight g3, but knight g3 looks... Oh, can you refresh really the yeah, uh, sorry. Board? Can you see it now? Uh, Rook yeah. e8, yeah. one takes... Okay, knight g3. And now he doesn't have bishop e6, unfortunately. Uh -huh. And you're going to get to ruin their structure without even having to sacrifice, Sophie. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> even better then. <laughs> even better, no? Yeah. And then you get queen h5 in a move, you know, right away after taking on f5. So this is a point of bishop g5. This is what Geller had planned uh, if pawn takes f5. And if rook f8, here he, uh, he still, I think he still wanted to take on f5. Yeah, bishop f5 and knight g3 is still an idea. Yeah. And there is one other idea that he mentions here after rook f8, instead of pawn takes f5, d5, which does give the square e5, but he had this idea of pushing all the way to d6 mm. and then bishop d5. But it doesn't look like it's getting anywhere. Rook b8. Now pawn takes f5, and the point is that here black can actually take on d6, because, sorry? I was just thinking about what about uh, bishop e7 instead of taking on f5? Mm, here, bishop e7? Yeah. Bishop e7, we can, okay. can move the rook and you want to take on f5 next, I guess. Yeah, just then d6 is... Is defended and you want to... A while at least. Okay, I have to consider giving up the exchange. And take on yeah. e4 also. Yeah, maybe. No, I think I have to give up the exchange. Otherwise, f7 is too weak. I have to mm. take on e4, probably. At least get the bishop out of d5. Okay, if bishop takes e4, I'm going to move the rook and uh, you're not taking on f5 anymore. Not ruining my pawn structure. No. If bishop f8, I was going to take with the bishop and hope nothing happens to my knight. But no, bishop <laughs> bishop takes. <laughs> seems seems okay. I probably have to bring it back to g7 next.
okay in that line instead of bishop e6, maybe knight e5. Uh, probably in uh, in the earlier line before bishop g5, when knight e5 was an idea, I guess. No, but this line that we are looking at seems good enough. He takes f5. Okay, so f5. Let's go to the game. Knight a5 was played. And here bishop... Oh, so he did not play... Uh... He did not take on f5, no. And he didn't play bishop g5 either. No, but he that's the line that he he's giving in, in, okay. the, in the annotations to this, to this game. I've mm. checked his annotations as well. Uh, have checked it with the computer, but also looked at what he is giving, and he's giving many of the computer moves, which is amazing. <laughs> Bishop d3, and now Smyslov takes on f5. Pawn takes. Bishop b7, and now he starts getting the pieces out. Queen d2, just start building the attack. Hmm. Black goes rook e8, and knight g3. No improve. First the queen, then the knight. Improve them one by one. Yeah. Queen c6. And here he plays another good move. Because since you're trying to bring all the pieces in the attack, you said that the weakness, uh, the point that you want to attack is f7. That all makes sense. But with a queen on c6, you have to be careful. Yes, uh, here. <laughs> I was thinking at uh, at uh, bishop h six, but that's just losing. Um, yes, you are losing a piece of bishop h six. Yeah, that's exactly the point. And rook e three is the threat now. Rook yeah. takes e three. So now he goes rook f two, a multi-purpose move. Yeah, defend g two and prepare rook f one. Black goes rook d eight in the game. Yeah, the game did come from a Grunfeld. Yeah. Uh, that's good uh, <laughs> recognition. Rook d8 was played. Okay, there was um, a line that um, was discussed apparently after the game that was Rook takes e3, giving up the exchange because Black seems to be in trouble. And this could be maybe trying to get counterplay, but it doesn't work. Okay. Because he takes. And here he has various good uh, good moves. C takes d4 works mm. uh, because here queen h6. Black can take on c1 and get another rook over here on f2. But this is very dangerous now. Queen h6, he's threatening f6. Yeah. So bishop d4. And here he has another sacrifice on g6. King f8. Right? Yeah, he plays in queen d6 here and gets the bishop. Yeah. So this was one of the lines that uh, were winning, but he also gives queen f4 as, a, as an alternative. And the idea is to go f6 in this position. Bishop f8, and this is, the, this is his idea, knight f5. Nice. Nice, no? <laughs> you get the, <laughs> get the king. So let me show you the game because now it's getting really interesting. Rook d8, he goes for bishop h6, that was part of the plan. Bishop h8, and now he goes for queen f4. He's threatening to take on g6 and then f7 is hanging. Mm. So rook d7. Can we... Yeah. No, I was just thinking about still taking and g6 because he can't take with the f pawn because then queen f8 but he can take with the h pawn right yeah he has yeah. to take with the h pawn instead pawn takes sorry pawn takes h takes has to be played yeah keep the pawn on f7 yeah you have that anytime almost anytime you want so he's not rushing into no taking on g6 oh, it's, it's a threat that black has to keep an eye on he goes knight e4 First, he brings the knight to g5. Keep another eye on f7. And then let's see if we take on g6. Mm. 
And here Smoslov goes for c4. Okay, black's position is already really, really bad. But c4 is only helping white even more if it's <laughs> maybe possible. Because he's closing the center and the queen side and there's no, uh, he has no more ruptures. There's no more uh, counterplay uh, on this side of the board where black was playing. So c4, bishop c2, now it's even easier for white basically. Rook e7. And okay, question, what would you do now? We have many good moves, but there are also some tricks. So I will let you discover them. <laughs> what would you play after rook e7? Um, it's... If we move the knight, we have to be very careful about rook e1. Yeah. Um, because, okay, rook, if let's say we play, um, let me just, let's say we play rook d6. I think that's a bad move, right? Because check, we can take mm. that, but then check. And if he then goes, then we have to play rook f1, and then this is checkmate. Yeah, exactly. So, that is one of the tricks. <laughs> very careful about. Have to be very careful about yeah. moving the knight from yeah. from d4 so maybe we should look at this he still can't take with the f pawn but now he can maybe even take with the queen No, you can take on g6. No, probably takes with the h pawn. No. Uh, yeah, I think that's the most logical. But did we accomplish anything? We opened up the f file. But is that enough? You can play that. Uh, why not f takes g6 instead of knight e4? There's nothing wrong with f takes g6. He's just he just prefers to bring another piece first. You could have started with f takes g6 instead of knight e4 earlier. And here you can start with pawn takes g6. Uh, the only thing you have to be careful <laughs> about is not fall into the trick with rook e1. Because this is what he was planning to do. He would he would have liked to go knight d6. So he would have mm -hmm. liked to play like this. Knight d6. And then f7 is, is hanging. But here rook e1 unfortunately is checkmate. Because even if you cover, there's queen g2. Yeah. So while you can still take on g6 and then take care of the checkmate or yeah, keep improving, here he starts with rook f1. Okay. The same principle, just keep the pawn on f5 and keep the tension for as long as, as you can and improve your pieces first and only strike when everybody's ready. And now we are really threatening to take on g6. But what if... Um... What if they take the knight? Yeah. Yeah. That's what happened. What if they take the knight? Good question. Okay. Do we take here? Yes. <laughs> yes, because if he takes the queen, then this checkmate on h7. That's very nice, yes. Mm. Rook takes f4, g takes h7, that's checkmate. That's a very nice line. Yeah. So pawn takes g6. If queen takes g6, then I guess we can simply take the rook now. Take here and queen f7. How does black stop rook f8? Only with bishop g7, I think, <laughs> for now. <laughs> Which but is not very good. <laughs> it's not very good, no. Uh, he doesn't keep the two pieces. So after pawn takes g6, he goes for f6. There's not no checkmate for now. Okay, Epimenida one. Uh, why you play knight e4 of pawn takes g6? It's just a matter of bringing the pieces first because you get to the same position afterwards. Uh, knight e4, you want the knight on e4 to jump to g5 maybe, and you want the pieces ready when you open the game. There's nothing wrong with pawn takes g6. Black would have taken with the h pawn, 
and the game continues. You might play 94 afterwards, but it's really just preferring to keep the tension. That's all there is about pawn takes g6. It's not that it's bad. And it's not winning uh, immediately either. So let's keep going here. After f6, we have many ways uh, of winning. Queen Move the queen away to g3 maybe. But he actually goes queen g5. And this is why this game is so famous, because he keeps <laughs> offering the queen move after move. Now the, yeah. ma the mate is on f8. Yeah. Pawn takes g5, rook f8. And this oh, is but also yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry? No, I was just uh, miss missing something. But yeah, that's uh That's the that's where the checkmate is, yeah. Yeah. So he goes queen d7. Black goes queen d7 here in this position. Okay, I think he's just trying to defend the seventh rank. <laughs> and here comes another prophylactic move, because basically white is in control and the only thing that the only way he could lose this game is by getting checkmated on e1 <laughs> so here he would have liked to take on f6 this is the line that he he wanted to play bishop takes queen takes h takes g6 queen takes he gives all this and here he wanted to play bishop g5 with the idea of bishop uh, f6 but black can still try rook e6 and unfortunately, after bishop f6, now rook takes f6 is suddenly a problem. Mm. Because we don't have rook f6. Rook e1 is made. Yeah. We have to take with the queen and, okay, queen g7 probably. It's not go getting to checkmate. Uh, this line, okay, can be improved. I'm just showing you what he he was trying to achieve here. For example, here you don't have to play bishop f6 anymore. Uh, you can go for queen h5 and it's probably still a huge advantage. But what I'm trying to say is that there is one, only one way that black can really turn this around and is by white forgiving, forgetting about rook e1. Yeah. So we have time here. We don't have to rush with the attack. We don't have to take on f6. The queen is not hanging still. Rook f8 is there. So he just goes king g1. What about though, uh, like, what if we take an h7? Is that winning as well? Yes, that should be winning as well. Take on h7. King takes and move the queen, no? Yeah, because we don't really want to take an, an, an e4 unless it's necessary, right? I think the, the rook can stay there for a while. It's not going anywhere. It's pinned no? for now. I would go queen h5 maybe in this position. Or take, rook takes f6 can also be an interesting continuation. Mm. Oh, queen h5. I think there are already so many ways to win. But he's just choosing the safest. <laughs> path. It's already winning in many, many ways. King g1 and forget about the checkmate on the back rank. Bishop g7 and now finally rook takes f6 works. In the same line, he, he plays rook g4. Takes on h7. Mm. <laughs> King h8. Takes over here. And now Okay, one uh, way to win in in many one of the many of them. <laughs> I think win H four was also an option. Yes, in that <laughs> position. Yeah, there's something with Rook of Fate that seems to be working. Yeah, I just don't want to make it... Uh, maybe just Queen H5? No, no, no. D2 is hanging. <laughs> rook of um, Fate. Yeah, okay. Harsh also wants to play Rook of Fate. Oh, can we just take the Rook maybe? Rook of Fate. You can... T <laughs> yes, that's what he played. Rook takes G4 yeah. is probably the simplest. And it's a third Queen sacrifice. And <laughs> that ends the game. This is the... Uh, probably one of his most beautiful attacking games. 
sacrifice the queen three times and then finally here black resigns yeah he has many beautiful wins many many nice games he's a very yeah very these good player were like... sorry these were really beautiful these were very beautiful yes okay yeah. i'm just going to go back here for a moment on 94 uh here because there's this question about taking on g6 Yes, we can take on g6, but here uh, black can take with the h pawn. Why can't black take with the h pawn? Of course, black can take. It's, 94 is not a loss of time, it's just keeping the tension, bringing the more pieces before you decide the game. Now, with, with the pawn on f5, you still have many options. Pawn takes g6, and now nothing is happening. That's what if you're the one attacking, uh, it's often a good idea to not necessarily play, not always play the most forcing moves because then your opponent has more chances to. You step. mean when you are in control, no? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that you could put it like that. Yeah, when you're in control and, and your opponent has no active plans, like it, it's, it happened in this position, no, you can take care of your pieces. And actually, when you attack, you are supposed to attack with all your pieces. If you can, and you have time to bring them all in the game, improve them to the maximum, that's ideal. Yeah. Okay, and with this we are going to finish with Geller, and I think we will decide over a cup of coffee, Sophie, <laughs> who the next player the next will be. <laughs> I actually, this uh, Geller, he reminds me a little bit of a Swedish player, um, oh. Johnny Hector. He has a very famous game where he also just leaves all of his pieces hanging and none of them can be taken taken uh so i think maybe we could include him sometime i'm going to look him up then thank you yes, you have to uh, you have to send me the thing. problem at all to find uh interesting games i'm going to look him up I, I haven't heard of him no i can show you i can send you uh like johnny hector from Sweden. johnny hector okay i'll, I'll look him up so uh, next time it's you going to be giving the class <laughs> <laughs> And I will be learning from, uh, Very, from uh, this yeah. player. <laughs> Great. Okay, thank you everybody for joining us. Um, hope you like this. Oh, and there's a very exciting uh, tournament starting this Thursday. I, I look forward to it. Uh, the, the tournament between Team Kramnik and Team Polgar. Oh, yes. Have you seen it? Yes, I've seen it. Uh, There's a Danish player. Uh, right, Jok I thought. One of the teams I, on Team Kramnik, I think. Yeah, it's, uh, it's two teams of very young players, very young and talented, talented players. And if I understood this correctly, Polgar and Kramnik are going to be one, the ones doing commentary. So I guess that's going to be very exciting. I can't wait to see um, that. This Thursday? Sorry? Starting uh, Thursday? Starting Thursday, yeah. That's what I saw. But uh, better that double check that. <laughs> yes, the yeah. youngsters tournament. I'm. I really look forward to that. It's yes. going to be fun. It will be exciting to see all these uh, strong and young players. All right. So thank you very much. Hope to see you next week. Uh, at the same time, we'll see how the schedule is here. And uh, see you soon. Thank you.